Hi everyone, my name is Marinx Pasovic and in this video I'll guide you through implementing pagination in .NET Web API while following the principles of Onion architecture. Pagination is a key feature in any robust API, especially when dealing with large datasets, and combining it with Onion architecture ensures our code remains clean, testable and easy to maintain. So, whether you're a beginner or an experienced developer, Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll not only understand how to implement pagination, but also how to integrate it into a layered Onion architecture-based project. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports the channel as well. So, let's get started. Paging refers to getting partial results from an API. You can imagine having millions of results in the database, and having your application try to return all of them at once. Not only would it be an extremely ineffective way of returning the results, but it could also possibly have devastating effects on the application itself or the hardware it runs on. Thus, we need a way to return a set number of results to the client to avoid these consequences. Before I show you how we can do that, I would like to let you know about our online courses. As you can see, we have just published our new Web API course in addition to our microservices and Blazor WebAssembly courses. So, feel free to check out our new platform and all the courses there. So, I already have a project prepared using Onion architecture, and this is the project I use in my Web API course. If you are not familiar with the Onion architecture, you can watch my video covering that topic. The link will be in the description below. Here, I have a repository layer to fetch the data from the database, the service layer to process the business logic. And finally, the presentation layer with my controllers to deliver the data to the clients. Right now, my API returns all the employees for a given company. So, I will have to add some more logic on top of the current implementation to apply a proper pagination. I can add all the required parameters here, directly inside the action. And this is probably what you will see in a lot of implementations, but I like to do it differently. My implementation will prove to be very useful when I add searching, filtering and sorting in my next videos. So, let's start by creating a new request features folder in the share project. And then inside, create the required class. I'm going to name this class request parameters. This will be an abstract class because I want other specific parameter classes to inherit from it, but I don't want this class to be instantiated directly. Now, let's define a constant to represent the maximum allowed page size for our pagination. This is important because we want to prevent clients from requesting excessively large pages, which could strain our API or database. I'll set it to 50 for now. Next, I add a property for page number. This represents the current page the client wants to access, and I'll set its default value to 1. By doing this, if the client doesn't explicitly specify a page, it will default to the first one. Now, let's handle the page size. This property will determine how many items are displayed per page. Internally, I'll store this value in a private field, page size, and give it a default value of 10. Then, let's create a page size property. And in a getter, I will simply return the same value. In the setter, I will add a condition. If the value provided by the client is greater than the max page size, I'll cap it at max page size. Otherwise, I'll just use the provided value. Ok, with this done, I can create a new class in the same folder. I'll name it employee parameters and inherit from the request parameters class. So, as you can see, I have an abstract class to hold the common properties for all the entities in our project and a single employee parameters class that will hold the specific parameters. It is empty for now, but when I apply some other features in future videos, it won't be. Now, I can move to the repository layer and change the logic there. I will start with the interface modification. So, I will add here a new employees parameters parameter and let's name the parameter the same. I also need to add the reference from the shared project. And that's all. I will just reorganize the rest of the parameters here. Now, 
I can visit the repository class and show you how I can modify the get employees async method to include pagination functionality. This change will ensure that the API can handle requests for specific pages of employees, which is crucial when dealing with large datasets. First, I add an additional parameter to the method. This will allow me to pass pagination related data like page number and page size. The first part of the method remains the same. I'm still using the find by condition method to filter employees by company ID and order the result by name. Now, here's where the pagination logic comes in. First, I will use the skip method to bypass records based on the page number and page size. The formula inside calculates the number of records to skip. For example, if the client requests page 2 with a page size of 10, this will skip the first 10 records, starting the results at the record 11. After skipping the records, I use the take method to retrieve the exact number of records specified by the page size. This ensures I only return the requested subset of data. Finally, I call to list async to execute the query and return the paginated list of employees as an asynchronous task. Great. With the repository changes in place, I can continue with the service layer changes. Again, I will start with the interface modification. Here, I will only add a new parameter. The same thing I did with the repository interface. Then, inside the service class, I have to change the signature of the method by providing the same parameter. And also, I have to pass the same parameter as an argument to the repository layer. You see, since we are fetching the child entities, we have to check if a company, the parent for the fetched entities, exists first. You can handle that error flow the way you like. You can use the exception flow with the global exception handler, a result pattern, or discriminated unions, which I prefer. You can find all the techniques explained in my videos, which are linked in the description below. Finally, I have to modify the get employees for company action. I will use the from query attribute to state that I will accept all the parameters as query string parameters and also have to pass the same one to the service layer. Now, with this initial implementation over, I can run the app and send a Postman request with the required query parameters. As you can see, I now fetch only the requested number of items for the specific page. But we can improve this even more. We currently provide only the set of data to the client. But we should provide some additional information about the previous and the next page, what is the current page, etc. So for that, I will create another class in the request features folder. And name it metadata. I will simply add some properties here that will provide some more information for the client. Then, since we are returning just a subset of results to the caller, we might as well have a paged list instead of a list. That said, I will implement the paged list class in the same folder. So, I will make this class generic and it inherits from a list T so that it can hold a collection of items of any type T. Next, I add a property for metadata. This will store information about the pagination, such as the total number of records, the current page, the total number of pages, etc. Now, I'll create a constructor for the page list T class. This constructor accepts the list of items, the total record count, the current page number, and the page size. Inside it, I will simply assign values to my metadata properties. And then, call the addRange method to populate the page list with the provided items. That's the constructor done. Now, let's move on to static method that will make it easier to create a page list T. I'll name it to page list and it will accept the collection of items as a source, then the number of items, the page number and the page size parameters. In this method, I first convert the source collection to a list. 
since page list T requires a list T. Then I return a new instance of the page list class, passing in the items, the total record count, the page number, and the page size. With this class, I now have a way to encapsulate both the paginated data and its metadata in a single easy to use structure. This will make it much simpler to return and consume paginated result in my API. Now, with that done, let's change a few more files in the project. Let's start with the repository interface modification. So now, I will return a page list of employees. Now, let's continue with the repository class. So, this method should return a page list now. And I will change this to a full body method and store the result of this query inside the employees variable. Also, I need the count of all the employees per given company. Finally, I need to return a page list. And for that, I will call the toPageList method and provide the required arguments for a collection of employees, the count, the page number, and the page size. Great. After that, I have to modify the iEmployee service interface. Now, our method will return a tuple containing two fields, employees and metadata. OK, with this change applied, I have to modify the service class. So again, this method must return a tuple with employees and metadata fields. And let's sort this out a bit. Then I will rename this variable to employees with metadata and finally return a tuple with the employees field assigned and the metadata as well. Finally, let's modify the controller. First, I'll update the method to store the result of get employees async into a variable named page result. This result will now include both the list of employees and the pagination metadata thanks to the page list class. Next, I will add pagination metadata to the response headers. This metadata will help clients understand the pagination details, such as the total record count, page size, and total pages. I'll use the response.headers.add method for this. The key for the header is expagination, and the value is the serialized JSON representation of the metadata property from the page result. As you can see, I use the JSON serializer .serialize method to convert the metadata object into a JSON string. Finally, let's update the return statement and return the employees which are stored in page result. Great. Now, let's run the app and send the same request. We see the same result again. But this time, if you check the headers tab, we can see the expagination header with all the required information. Excellent. Now, just a note here. To enable the client application to read the new expagination header that we've added in our action, you have to modify the course configuration by using the with exposed headers method and provide the key of your header as the argument. All right, that wraps up this video on implementing pagination in a .NET Web API using Onion architecture. By following this approach, we have ensured our API is clean, efficient, and client-friendly, especially when dealing with large data sets. Thank you for watching, and if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. As always, feel free to leave any questions or thoughts in the comments below, as it would be great to hear from you. So, see you in the next video, and until then, all the best.